All right, this is Mark with San Diego Miramar College, and today we'll be talking about the patient assessment, specifically the patient assessment medical, but we'll touch on some other things as well. In front of me now is the patient assessment algorithm, and we're gonna take a moment and talk about this before we get into the medical assessment, because this is important to understand. So we're gonna do a scene size up on every single patient. So everybody gets a scene size up. We always gotta determine mechanism of injury, nature of illness, so on and so forth. Everybody needs to have a primary assessment done. So we address the ABC issues, orientation status, and then it branches off into two different assessments. You have your medical assessment and you have your trauma assessment. For the medical assessment, you have two different kinds. And for the trauma assessment, you have two different kinds of assessments. So for your medical patient that's alert and oriented, you can do a history based off their chief complaint. So that's our sample OPQRST history that you guys are familiar with. And then you can do a modified secondary assessment where you look at the affected area, and that's where you use our acronym IPA. Vital signs field impression comes after that. Then you have your altered medical patient where you need to do a rapid secondary or rapid head to toe. And then you can find based off their chief complaint, Maybe you can gain some history based off that rapid secondary or family, friends, bystanders are there to provide you with history information. And then all the assessments end with vital signs, field impression, treatment, communications, reassessment, turnover, all of that. But what's essential for you guys to understand is when you get tested on the medical, you will be tested on an alert and oriented patient. You will not be tested on an altered medical patient. So you will be tested on this branch of the patient assessment algorithm. We'll go over to trauma real quick, talk about this. You have your alert and oriented, no major mechanism of injury. Then you just have to do a modified secondary. That's a really easy trauma call. So isolated injury, somebody cut their finger, somebody you know, broke their arm. If they're an 18 year old and they fell from a skateboard and broke their arm that would be an example of no major mechanism of injury as long as they didn't hit their head they're alert and oriented it's all good we can go straight into a modified secondary and then on the other side of the spectrum you have your altered loc or a major mechanism sometimes major mechanism and altered level of consciousness come together and you, you see both of them but in that case you'll be performing a rapid secondary and transporting hopefully within 10 minutes or less. Now, when you get tested on the trauma assessment, you will be tested on this branch of the trauma assessment. You'll be performing a rapid secondary, and we'll talk more about that when we get there. But first, let's talk about the patient assessment medical, which is what you guys should be studying now. So I made this study guide uh, just to explain it a little better. The page 57 and the pink teaching tool, they're great, but at the same time, it doesn't really lend itself well to an online platform. So I went ahead and I made this, and it basically breaks down page 57 of the Red Book into a more thorough explanation of what's required for each step. And let's go through each step now. So let me zoom in here. So for the scene size up, I just made it into one statement. It's like three sentences, it's super easy, and it hits every single checkbox. So all you need to say for the scene size up for your patient assessment medical is standard precautions, scene safety. This appears to be a nature of illness. There's one patient. I will consider the need for additional resources and spinal motion restriction. Now, I don't want you guys to get in the habit of thinking that this is a script. It's not a script. It's just for the scene size up, it's easy to say just one statement as opposed to fumbling around and trying to figure out what you need to say. This is all you need to say. But the way I want you guys to think about the medical assessment is this is a structure. You guys memorize the structure. The variables all change. So you can't script it, okay? With the exception of the scene size up. Now let's talk about the primary. General impression, that's just a brief statement about the approximate age, sex, body position, and stability of the patient. Now I wanna say, that this is an audio visual assessment and you're not making patient contact yet. You haven't introduced yourself. You haven't said hello. You basically walked into the room. What do they look like? How old are they? What body positioning are they in? Are they male or female? Do they look stable or unstable? Then we go down to AVPU. 
First thing you want to do, always introduce yourself nice and polite. Hello, sir. My name is Mark. I'm an EMT. And then I'm going to ask their name, what city they're in, and what year it is. For your medical patient, you only have to ask those three questions. And then you don't want to find out, are they alert and oriented times three? Like I already said, they will be for your assessment when you get tested on it. So we're just going to move right along here. We're going to say they're alert and oriented times three. And then you want to ask them why they called EMS today. So find out what their chief complaint is. Why do you call 911? Why do you call EMS? What brings us out here today? Any variation is appropriate. And then you want to verify with the proctor for any life threats. So proctor, uh, we have a chief complaint of, let's just say, difficulty breathing. Are there any life threats? And then they respond, no. Okay, we'll move on. Go down to airway. So you're assessing one thing for airway. It's, is it patent? And you may state the airway is patent if the patient is speaking. There's two things you're gonna check for breathing. Adequate rate and tidal volume is the first thing. You treat that if it requires. And then the second thing is to ensure adequate oxygenation using the pulse ox. And if it's low, you're going to use either a nasal cannula or a non rebreather mask or BVM, depending on the situation. But for your medical assessment, it's pretty much limited to nasal cannula or non rebreather mask. And it's really up to your judgment using the O2 set, work of breathing. I'm going down to circulation. Three things you need to check. Number one, assess for major bleeding, treat as needed. And then we're gonna check a pulse for five to 10 seconds. Now, since we have alert and oriented patient, right? We're gonna check a radial pulse and we're just gonna check for five to 10 seconds, assessing for rate, rhythm, and quality. Number three, you're gonna assess the skin signs on either the forehead or the neck, check for color, temperature, and condition. At this time, you're gonna make a treatment or a priority transport decision. So. The little phrase we want you guys to say is this is a priority patient, we will expedite transport. And then you wanna give a couple of reasons. So they had a low two sat, uh, the skin signs didn't look good. Whatever it is, just give a couple of reasons to justify why you're making that patient a priority. Now we go down to history taking. Remember, they were alert and oriented times three, we can do a chief complaint based history taking. So we go through our OPQRST questions. I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about them here, uh, we all know what they are. They're all in the book. They really just come down to you have to memorize the questions. It is what it is. Onset, provocation, quality, radiation, severity, and time. So what were you doing when this pain started or discomfort, as you can see down here? For respiratory allergic reaction patients, make sure to appropriately modify the OPQRST questions. So OPQRST is great for pain, but in some situations, it's actually not that great, like difficulty breathing. It's not the best assessment. There's better ones out there, but we're going to use it and just modify it. So onset, what were you doing when this difficulty breathing started or this pain started? Provocation, does anything make it easier to breathe? Does anything make the pain go away? Now, I'm just giving you guys some examples, right? Does anything make it better? Anything make it worse? Quality, if you were to describe your difficulty breathing, is it harder for you to get air in? Is it harder for you to get air out? If you were to describe your pain using a couple words, what do you say it feels like? Okay, so you just wanna get the quality here. And I'm giving you both. I'm giving you pain and I'm giving you difficulty breathing. So radiation, obviously for pain, radiation works. Does it move anywhere? Does it stay in one spot? Can you point to it? But for difficulty breathing, radiation's, you know, it's, not, it's not a good question. So you wanna ask reoccurrence. So has this ever happened to you before? Have you ever felt short of breath like this before? Have you ever had this difficulty breathing? Severity, go ahead and rate your pain on a scale of one to 10 rate your difficulty breathing on a scale of one to 10. Time, how long have you been experiencing this pain? And then you wanna add two clarifying questions related to the chief complaint. The pink teaching tool really outlines this well. There's a bunch of specific questions you can ask for your clarifying questions, but you always wanna tie it back to the chief complaint. So if they have chest pain, ask if they're short of breath. If they have difficulty breathing, ask if they're lightheaded, dizzy, if they're having any uh, itchiness. Now you want to go down to ample. So we're finishing off our sample history. We want to ask, do you have any allergies? Are you currently taking any medications? What's your medical history look like? Anything significant I need to know about? What was the last thing you ate? And what was leading up to this? Is there any chance this pain or this discomfort could have been caused by something else? You just want to rule out anything here. That's what the E is for. Now we go down to our focus secondary. So since this is an alert and oriented patient, we can just assess the affected body part or system. And we're gonna use our little IPA acronym for that. So that's inspect, palpate, and auscultate. 
So for the inspection, you're going to infect the affected. In, okay, excuse me. You're going to inspect the affected body part or system visually, removing any clothing if necessary. So for example, if it's on the chest, you want to have them either lift up their shirt or remove their shirt. If it's on the abdomen, lift up their shirt. Check for any abnormalities such as discoloration, distension, accessory muscle use, that's your difficulty breathing patients, implanted devices, medications, skin irritation, swelling. You're just looking for anything abnormal. Then you go down to palpate and you're going to appropriately palpate the affected area for any abnormalities. Again, tenderness, rigidity, do they give you a pain response when you're palpating? And then you'll auscultate. So you'll auscultate the lungs in really six sites but it's, it's three, and then they're all done bilaterally, which means on both sides. So the first one, second and third intercostal space, midclavicular line, fourth, and fourth or fifth, this is the second one, fourth or fifth intercostal space, mid-axillary line. And the third one is the inferior angle of the scapula. You're going to do all of those bilateral for a total of six. Okay. Now we go down to a set of vital signs, and you got to ask the proctor for the vital signs. So you got to ask specifically for pulse, respirations, blood pressure, skins, pupils. You cannot just say, hey, I'm gonna get a set of vital signs. You gotta specifically ask which ones you want. So again, pulse, respiratory rate, and quality, blood pressure, skins, and pupils. And you won't be taking, taking a full set of vitals, at least when you're getting tested on it. You will be taking a set of vitals in another testable portion, just uh, don't worry about it. Just verbally ask for the vital signs when you get down here in your medical assessment. For the interventions, uh, I hope you guys watched the other video on medication administration. That goes into a lot of detail here in interventions, but the real quick version is we're going to do a field impression by stating the indications, the signs and symptoms of patients having. That's your field impression. Number two, once you select the appropriate medication, you're going to describe the actions of that medication. Third step, you're going to state the San Diego County protocols for that medication. Does it have any contraindications? Go through the five right, PM, DRE, and triple check. Once you're done with that, you will explain the administration or assist with the medication appropriately. Once you've performed the intervention, we need to reassess. So you're going to reassess all of your patients, at least here at Miramar College, every five minutes because they're all going to be unstable when you're getting tested but there's really two intervals. There's five minutes for unstable patients and 15 minutes for stable patients. But what's more important is that you reassess as often as the patient's condition mandates. So if there's a change in patient status, you reassess. And you verbalize the parameters you're reassessing for. So airway, breathing, circulation, level of consciousness, vital signs. And then if you used a one to 10 pain scale or rated for difficulty breathing, have them re-rate that difficulty breathing on a scale of one to 10 again. Now for the verbal report, you need to include the age, gender, chief complaint, and relevant history, vital signs, and treatment with the response to that treatment. So I hope this clears it up for you guys. And if you guys want to see a medical assessment demonstrated, we've got videos of both allergic reaction, anaphylaxis with the use of an epinephrine pen, and we also have chest pain with uh, nitroglycerin and aspirin being demonstrated on YouTube. So it should be posted up somewhere with this description. If you guys have any questions, just go ahead and message me on Canvas or leave a comment down below. I will see you guys soon. Have a great day.